Good evening to this special Christmas Eve service here at Evangelical United Church of Christ in Marysville, Kansas. We're glad you're here wherever you're watching this from, your home, maybe a family member's home, wherever. Join your hearts with ours as we celebrate our dear Savior's birth. Before we go on, I just wanted to let the kids know that I tuned in to my Santa app earlier this evening, and Santa is over Nebraska as we speak and should be here in Kansas in the next couple of hours. So stay good, okay? All right.
2.14 says, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. One of the most familiar carols we hear during the holidays is, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. The story behind the song based on a poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow is very interesting. In 1860, Longfellow was at the peak of his success as a poet. Abraham Lincoln had just been elected president, giving hope to many in the nation. But things soon turned dark for America and for Longfellow personally. The Civil War began the following year, and Longfellow's wife died of severe burns after her dress caught fire. Longfellow sustained severe burns on his hands and face from trying to save her. He was so badly burned that he could not even attend his wife's funeral. In his diary for Christmas Day, 1861, he wrote, how inexpressibly sad are the holidays. In 1862, the Civil War escalated and the death toll from the war began to mount. In his diary for that year, Longfellow wrote of Christmas, a Merry Christmas, says the children, but that is no more for me. In 1863, Longfellow's son, who had run away to join the Union Army, was severely wounded and returned home in December. There is no entry in Longfellow's diary for that Christmas. Longfellow wanted to pull out of his despair, so he decided to try to capture the joy of Christmas. He began, I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play. And wild and sweet, the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. As Longfellow came to the sixth stanza, he was stopped by the thought of the condition of his beloved country. The Battle of Gettysburg was not long past. Days looked dark, and he probably asked himself the question, how can I write about peace on earth, goodwill to men in this war-torn country where brother fights against brother and father against son? But he kept writing. And what did he write? And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. That could be said of our day as well. But then, catching an eternal perspective and the real message of Christmas and Christ himself, Longfellow wrote the final stanza. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor does he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. With peace on earth, goodwill to men. The real message of Christmas is Christ himself. God is not dead. God will prevail. Would you pray with me? 
God, I think that we can see many similarities to our time and those of Longfellow's. This year we feel perhaps hopeless and helpless. We watch on the news that our nation, much like it was in the 1860s, is terribly divided and that we cannot even discuss rationally with our own families and friends the state of the nation. We see our country being ravaged by COVID-19. We see people in this blessed nation going hungry not being able to pay for utilities, not being able to pay for shelter. And it would be easy for us to say, like Longfellow, hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. But God tonight, as on every Christmas Eve for 2,000 years, we silence ourselves, we silence the world, and we remember that God is in control and that at the most perfect time, God sent, you sent your son into this world of hate and pettiness and you sent your son to teach us how to love you and to love one another. God, on this Christmas Eve, may our hearts be lifted May they take flight because no matter what the world and circumstances would tell us, you will prevail. God, we love you this evening. And I'm thinking about each congregant at this church I'm thinking about friends. I'm thinking about families of families. I'm thinking about the stranger on the street, of those who look different and believe differently from me. And I lift them up because God with you, there is no exception. You are love. And so we pray this evening that your love would permeate this earth and that once again, you would break in in a divine way and that you would fill our hearts with the comfort and the peace that no man can give. In Jesus' name I pray it. Amen. Let us hear again the story of our dear Savior's birth as told in the Gospel of Luke. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their own towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiance, who was obviously pregnant by this time. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son, 
She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the village inn. That night, some shepherds were in the fields outside the village, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terribly frightened, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped snugly in strips of cloth. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to all whom God favors. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, come, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They ran to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. Then the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary quietly treasured these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their fields and flocks, glorifying and praising God for what the angels had told them. And because they had seen the child, just as the angel had said. Tonight, I want us to think about how quickly Christmas passes. Maybe it doesn't feel like it. We start getting ready, I think, in September. The lead-in takes a long, long time. But tomorrow morning, maybe tomorrow afternoon, the presents will have been opened, the dinner eaten, the surprises revealed. And probably you and I, just like Joseph and the shepherds and the people who heard the shepherds' stories, will go on about our business. We'll start planning for the after Christmas sales, start thinking about New Year's and what holiday is next. But my prayer for you this evening is that you be like Mary, that I would have the heart of Mary and that we together would treasure these things in our hearts and think about them often. We don't know what this coming month is going to bring, let alone the coming year. But we as Christians have the knowledge, the heart knowledge, that Jesus was born 2,000 years ago, is born this very night in our hearts, in our lives, and will be born in the hearts of people around the world as we continue to share the wonderful story of a Redeemer who came who came in the most humble of ways, in a manger, in a terrible, stinky old barn, 
the savior of the world, so that he could not be thought of as loving only the rich, only the haves, that he wasn't born into the elite se segment of the society. He was born into the very lowest so that every man and woman and boy and girl could then like the shepherds and now as us relate. Be of good cheer, brothers and sisters. Treasure these things in your heart. Be a light as Christ is a light for us. And Merry, Merry Christmas. We have a tradition here at Evangelical United Church of Christ that on Christmas Eve, we take a special offering that is given to every child's hope out of St. Louis. I wanted to read to you a little history about every child's hope. Every Child's Hope, or ECH, was founded on January 20th, 1858, by Reverend Louis Nall as an orphanage for children whose immigrant parents had died from cholera outbreaks. Originally, an orphan boy was taken in by a St. Louis church but that quickly grew to include approximately 50 children. Then called the German Protestant Orphan's House, many of the children placed in the orphanage had lives led on the streets and doorways of St. Louis. By the mid 1860s, programs were moved to their current location on St. Charles Rock Road where more than 300 orphans called ECH home. Renamed the Evangelical Children's Home in 1945, services and programs were adapted to meet the ever-changing needs of St. Louis youths. Today, ECH is no longer an orphanage, but cares for vulnerable children and their welfare is at the heart of every program they offer. More than 200 staff members across St. Louis and Kansas City campuses are dedicated to preventing child abuse, treating emotional trauma and mental health issues, and providing aftercare and follow-up services. ECH helps more than 1,400 youth each year, offering healing and hope that sets them on a path for a brighter future. Through their diverse programs, they strive to strengthen families and encourage all family members to reach their full potential by leading healthy, productive, and self-sufficient lives. Their programs include residential treatment, the Stepping Stones Transitional Living, ECH School, Head Start Early Education Center, Family Solutions for Kids, Outpatient Psychiatric Services, and Foster Care Case Management. In your newsletter, we sent you a, an envelope and I pray that you will find it in your hearts to be generous toward these children and toward these young people who have had a rocky start and need your help. So I thank you in advance. I ask God to bless you as you bless others. Amen.
before we part ways, I just want to wish you a very bright, happy, healthy Christmas and New Year. Know that you are loved and prayerfully, we will be together again in 2021. As we do each year, we end our service with Silent Night. And Mandy Cook is going to lead us tonight. Thank her very much and our other musicians. But she's going to lead us in Silent Night. And I would like for you to sing along. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child. Savior is born. So